morning, everybody. So welcome back to Florida Training Academy. And in today's video, we're going to show you how to start an IV. Yes. And so if you need IV therapy classes, if you are not competent with your IV skills, we have IV classes right here in Jacksonville, Florida for nurses and graduating nurses. So what do we have here? We have our wonderful patient here. We also have our IV start kit and it contains the alcohol prep pad, a dressing, a two by two gauze tape, and also a tourniquet. We have our saline flushes. I like to have two of everything in case one drops or one gets contaminated. We also have our, say, our syringes that don't have anything in them. And we're going to use that in order to draw a lab. So whenever you're starting IV, depending on what facility you're working in, it may be a policy that will allow you to draw your labs from a fresh IV, but check your policies. You all, we're in a simulated environment. We're in a lab environment. That's the best needle I could find, but we're gonna use that needle to transfer the blood that we collect into our blood collection tube. And because some of our patients are bleeders, I like to have more gauze than necessary. And so let's go ahead and get started. Our patient has given us permission. We have sanitized, we have our gloves on, and I'm gonna start opening up my supplies. So let's get it open. When you open your supplies, your goal is to keep everything as clean as possible. So starting the IV isn't necessarily, um, you're not using sterile technique, but you want to use clean technique. So try to keep everything as clean as possible. And so I'm just going to start separating some of my items. I have my tape. I have my tourniquet. I have my alcohol pads. What I have here is an ink pen because you'll have to make sure that you um, date, initial, and time the label whenever you're done. I am going to go ahead and flush my connection tubing. And so notice that when I am taking a connection tubing out, I'm going to go ahead. When you're starting, you don't have to screw up the hub because it came out of a sterile package, but you're going to connect your saline syringe and you're going to prime the tubing and that's going to allow the saline to fill the connection tubing to get rid of the air but we're going to keep this right in this package and we're going to um, not take it out until we need to actually use it in order to um, flush the IV. We'll get to these supplies later and so my patient's given permission we're going to go ahead and put the tourniquet on I did a um, site selection already, so I know that this is the left hand. This is the patient's non-dominant hand, and we're going to start distally. What does that mean? Whenever we start an IV, we like to start lower. I know a lot of people want to go immediately for the antecubital or the bend of the arm, but that's not always the best place. And remember, your patient's move, and if they keep bending their arm, then of course, your IV may occlude. All right, and so now that I have my tourniquet on, and I just want to show you that again, the easiest way to put a tourniquet on is to wrap, pull taut, cross, and then tuck up is what I like to say, tuck up. When you tuck up, I call these my bunny ears, my straps, it makes sure my straps don't fall towards my clean area. And technically, you like to have your tourniquet about three inches above your insertion site. All right, and so now I'm going to go back. I'm going to go ahead and clean. When you clean the skin, if it's alcohol, um, we like to clean in circular motions for about 20 seconds. If you have chloroprep, it's usually back and forth for about 30 seconds. But usually whenever it is still moist, you can really visualize that vein. And a good technique that I would like for you to use also is just to have the alcohol gauze pointing because as it evaporates as the alcohol evaporates you may forget where the vein is and remember that veins are spongy if you find something hard or nodular or if the vein splits we call that a bifurcation you want to avoid that area all right so let me clean again and I better start moving faster because I've had that tourniquet on for more than 60 seconds but my patient forgives me is that right yes that's right all right let's go ahead and pull out our IV catheter when we're opening up our packaging, we're going to take off the protective covering. 
And remember, whenever you insert an eye, whenever you're inserting your needle, it is bevel up. So the sharp end is towards the skin, the bevel or the opening of the needle is up. And there's a little area here that helps you to advance your catheter. So whenever you're starting the IV, the only part that's going to be left in the patient is the catheter, the plastic part. You're removing the metal. All right, you're going to Go ahead and educate your patient. Let them know that they're going to fill a stick. Don't say that it won't hurt because it probably will hurt. Um, I like to pull the skin down taut and I'm going to go in on three, one, two, and three. And now once you're in, um, you want to pause for a moment. I already have backflash, which is the goal. Once you pause, you want to go in just maybe a centimeter or two more. You don't want to go so far in with the needle until you actually go through the vein. Now I am going to advance my catheter, just the plastic part. Okay, so I'm advancing it. And as you all can see, I'm getting quite a bit of backflow or backflash here. And so what that tells me is that my patient is probably going to start bleeding. So I'm going to go ahead and take that gauze. I'm going to occlude the vein, which means I'm going to press on it. I'm going to take out the needle and put that in the biohazardous or the sharp spin. I'm going to connect my connection tubing. And now you don't want to flush while you still have the tourniquet in place. So quick release. We're going to release that tourniquet. I'm going to pull back just a little bit. And now I'm going to flush. Ask the patient, how do they feel? They may have a sensation where they're tasting the saline right now. And you're also looking to make sure there is no um, 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 pooling of uh, fluids, um, that there is no bubbles that would indicate that the IV line was infiltrated. Wonderful. So we have a patent IV. I'm going to get a new alcohol pad because with this being a brand new IV, I am going to go ahead and quickly collect my specimen. Then I will go ahead and tape everything up. So I'm going to pull back, I'm going to aspirate. And so this is not my specimen. This is the waste. So remember, I flushed it with saline. So if you just take this and you send this to lab, it's going to be diluted. So I'm going to take this. Here. I'm going to scrub that hub again, making sure I don't move that line too much. And now this is the specimen that I will use to transfer into my collection tubing. Okay. And so now the last thing I have to do, everybody, is get a new alcohol swap. Don't get it off the table like I just did. Remember, this is just for classroom purposes. I'm going to screw up the hub again, and I'm going to go back and flush that IV line one more time. And now when I'm flushing, I'm going to go ahead and clamp it off, and that's going to prevent blood from getting back into my actual tubing. All right, so great job. My patient did wonderfully. Great job, patient. I'm just going to put that there for now. All right, so let's go ahead and start our tape process. And I know you're like, well, Eunice, why didn't you pull your tape off before? Because tape sticks to everything and it also sticks to the germs that are on the table. So I usually don't um, prepare my tape until last, but you do what is best for you and your patient. If you have a patient who moves a lot, well, that kind of like erase everything that I just said and you probably do want to prepare your tape first but I'm going to go under with a um, small amount of tape and I'm just putting the tape on the hub so I'm not taping the actual catheter and be careful with pulling um, because if you pull a whole bunch it can cause pain to your patient so what I did was I secured it that way and of course this is a mannequin so the tape isn't sticking as well as I would like but it's what we have for now and just pretend as if it did stick, okay? All right, so now that we have our catheter tape, we're gonna go ahead and use our transparent dressing. And so the transparent dressing not only protects the IV site, 
but it allows you to look in to monitor. If you see anything that looks abnormal, you may want to stop whatever transfusion you have going. In addition to stopping it, notify that physician that you uh, may need a new IV line. So now that we have our transparent dressing on, we're going to go ahead and I like to use a J loop in order to secure my connecting tubing. The purpose of the J loop is that it reduces the tension because if you just have this tape straight, we can actually, if the patient like turns the wrong way and um, they can pull the catheter, they can pull it straight out. But with the J loop, it's going to be harder for this to get caught on surfaces caught on clothing and it just keeps everything in place so our patient did a wonderful job all right so i'm going to go ahead and now before i take off my gloves i need to transfer the blood that we collected from the syringe into the actual blood blood collection tube and so i do that by piercing the tube and you want to use a needle that had a larger gauge, okay? And so it's gonna start flowing in. And once it stops flowing, you want to, um, and usually it's gonna stop flowing um, at about a two thirds the way filled. You don't wanna overfill it. If you overfill it, it's gonna be hard for the machine to read. Don't forget to initial date and label your tubing. Going to take off these gloves. I'm going to put them in the trash. I'm going to sanitize my hands. And then I'm going to go ahead and label everything. So let me go ahead and get to signing. So we have today's date. And of course, the pen isn't working. So just pretend it is. <laughs> in our simulated environment things happen and we just keep right on going. I'm going to go ahead and put this off to the side. I'm just going to peel a portion of the label that comes with the actual um, IV start kit. So I'm going to peel a portion. I'm going to place it. All right. Remember, we don't write on our patients and then don't forget to label your tube. Go ahead and put the label on it, sign date initial, insert it inside of the specimen collection bag, and send that off to lab. So everybody, this is Nurse Eunice. Yes, I made a net mess, and you will also. But this is Eunice with Florida Sand Academy, and we have a functioning IV. I hope you learned a lot. Bye.